Hi everybody and welcome back to another video on Tim's Tech Corner. Today we are going to be dealing with Android keyboards, both software and hardware. I've got a friend of mine who has a Samsung Galaxy Note, the 10 inch version. She just recently had Jelly Bean roll out to it and commented that she thinks the keyboard is ugly as fuck. And I definitely agree, the stock ICS and the stock JB keyboard is kind of crappy. So since I've got some experience with several different software and hardware keyboards, I figure I'll go ahead and throw a YouTube video up on it, help a friend out, and also introduce people to some different software keyboards. Before we go into it, I just wanted to let people know my criteria of what I like to see in software keyboards. One of them is I like the ability for the keyboard to work with many different themes, and that includes themes from outside that keyboard, um, that keyboard's maker. So if you have like SwiftKey, SwiftKey only works with SwiftKey themes. But if you have something like Super Keyboard, you can use Go Keyboard themes, you can use Super ones, Better ones, Ultra ones. Uh, you can use a great variety. So I. That's one of the things that I look for in keyboard software is the ability to use different themes from different manufacturers. I also like the ability to change the keyboard sound. Sometimes the default clack just gets a little old and boring after a while, so the ability to change the different keyboard sounds, um, I happen to really like and enjoy that. That's so. Those are some of the two um, rather big criteria that I like when picking a uh, a keyboard. Now, the first one that we're going to take a look at is my HP TP, and this one is running SwiftKey. SwiftKey was the first aftermarket keyboard that I had played around with. There's SwiftKey and SwiftKey Tablet. You can use regular SwiftKey on a tablet. Um, this was the first one that I played around with and the first one that I really liked. Um, this one has a lot of options in it in that you can have it learn from your posts to Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, uh, SMS. This is a, it basically learns how to predict the words that you're going to type because it learns from you. It also has a few things like uh, a heat map where you can see um, the, the, the basically a history of the keys that you've been hitting. Uh, keys that you hit a lot will be very, very bright, and ones that you don't hit, maybe like Z and Q, are just going to be a little bit dimmer. So you can have it do a couple things here, like the key height, landscape height, what it does with Bluetooth, uh, audio and haptic feedback. So here you can set whether it will make a sound in the volume, but not what sound it does. It has some different themes over here. Cobalt Sky, Fuchsia Hollow, Dark, Light, Neon, and Pumpkin. I'll go ahead and show you the Sky theme over here. Alright, so Google search is going to come up, and if it's not too blurred out, it's basically white with kind of a light powdery blue. And my favorite on this one and the first one that I had really gone with is Hollow. Excuse me, not Hollow, Neon. This was one of my uh, favorite themes for a long time. As you can see it down here at the bottom, there's Hollow. I happen to like this one a lot. It's really crisp. One of my favorite themes early on. Now, my... TF-101 is doing the recording today because the TF-101 and my HPTP are both using Swift and my TF-101 is actually using Hollow. So I have Swipe running on the Toshiba and since I want to actually show that one off on this one, it's not doing my recording today. So speaking of the Toshiba and Swipe, we will go ahead and move on to that one. So here is the Toshiba Excite. This is TSF shell that it's running over here. We've got a hollow live wallpaper, hollow for holographic, 
how you touch it, it actually responds to it. So now this particular one, when I picked it up, was running um, swipe. And let's see if I can pull that one up for you guys. Oh, where is something I can actually do is search and do some text on for this one. All right, here's Google search. Okay, so here is swipe. Now, what swipe is, and not to be confused with swipe pad, this is S-W-Y-P-E, is this is actually a trace keyboard. You can plank out your letters like that, or you can go ahead and do some tracing. So if you wanted to see, uh, if you wanted to do, go to the house, go G to the O space, T to the O, T-H-E, H-O-U-S-E. So you can trace it out if you want to do it that way. Now, I'm not really too sure how well it handles two of the same letter in a row, like let's say the word tree, so T-R-E-E. -E. All right, it actually pulled it off. So here is the swipe keyboard, fairly stock looking uh, colors to it in theme, black and white. However, it does do tracing for text input. It's one of the few that uh, does it that way. And now we will see if we can get you Super Keyboard here. Now, Super Keyboard is definitely one of my favorites as it supports a lot of themes. And it also has a test function, so when you're done playing with everything, you can actually see it. All right, so here comes Super Keyboard. Now, Super Keyboard actually supports different orientations. So as you can see here, here's a, a theme that I have for Super Keyboard where it's kind of a black with a gold, almost like a steampunk coloration. However, if I rotate it, it goes to um, a completely different thing. Now, what I like about Super Keyboard is this is one of the few that has the ability to change the different sounds. So we'll see if you can hear it. So that's one sound set. And you can change it by going over to Sound and Vibration and Keyboard Click Sound. You have the Android, the iPhone, Windows, and Galaxy. And you can just pick it and then hit test. See how that's a much lighter clack to it. Here's the default Android. We all know that click. I kind of get tired of that one, which is why I really like this particular piece of software. There's an iPhone. And um, my favorite, the one that I use the most, on this one is Windows Phone. So there you go. There is Super Keyboard. And uh, I do believe I actually have a tablet that's running Super Keyboard. So you can see it a little bit bigger here. Actually, for this one, let me see what this one is here. Ah, AI type. Okay, good. We've got AI type over here. AI type is pretty solid. And it's got uh, a few different themes for it. Okay, here is AI type. Case makes this one a little hard to get in the stand. So here is uh, AI type. And you've got a couple of different themes built in. And you could actually get a few uh, free, get some more themes down there. So you have kind of a, um, 
the standard ice cream sandwich one, which is your typical black and gray with the white. You have AI types theme, which is what I'm using. It's a little bit brighter. You've got an iPhone theme, gingerbread, a couple different gingerbread, Windows 7, and this is a custom one uh, that I had been running. Now, this particular piece of software has got a lot of different options for auto suggestions, auto correct, auto capitalization, um, communication with the cloud. You have some different uh, options over here like setting the height. I really like this because I'll show you uh, a keyboard software a little later on where the keyboard takes up so much of the screen I actually really don't like it. Fun Factory, when you're working with AI type keyboard, is where you're changing a lot of the things. The keyboard theme, you can set the fonts that you want to use over here. And this is really, I really like that about AI type keyboard is the ability to set the font. If you take a look here, this almost looks very Galaxy Tab 2-ish if it's not too washed out on the video. You can set a background image, key color, suggestion font size, space bar color. I mean, this is... This is nearly limitless in what you can define here on AI type keyboard. So that has that working for it. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a piece of uh, keyboard software that actually is one of the most annoying ones that I have. Uh, I don't have that handy, so we're going to skip that one for now. So let's go on to some physical keyboards. Here is the Motorola Bluetooth keyboard. It has a power switch over here and the batteries here. When you just simply tap it and you'll see a green light pop up over here. That tells you that it's on. And if you have it Bluetoothed into something, it's now synced. This is a, uh, a really nice Bluetooth keyboard. I like this one. Unfortunately, it lays fairly flat. It has this little battery area that gives a little bit of height, but it sits fairly flat. The HP official keyboard, this was uh, one of my early Bluetooth keyboards. This particular one is really, really good because it gets propped up. So you can uh, see here, you have this whole area right here. So it props it up at a nice typing angle. And uh, both of these Bluetooth keyboards are fairly similar to your typical laptop keyboards. Now, if you're looking for something a bit smaller, you can get the Hype Mini Bluetooth keyboard. As you can see, it's about the size of an iPhone or Thunderbolt, Droid Air. It's pretty small. Charger port up there and on off. This one's seen better days. Uh, the shell, it, the quality on this is a little off. It's got a sync button up here and uh, it's handy to keep in your pocket if you're a really common texter. Next we have the Freedom Pro. The Freedom Pro is a foldable one and you can actually see videos on the hype and the freedom on my channel. You can open this one up and it comes with a carrying case and you just snap that open. Now it's locked open and it's rigid. Nice little carry case here with a clasp. And it has a, a, a dock that you can pull out over here that you can put your phone on it and it rests it up kind of like a monitor. So if you want to see videos on that, you can take a look at my channel. I do like all of the keyboard software better than the stock keyboards for Ice Cream Sandwich and Jelly Bean. Uh, some of the ones that I can definitely recommend are Go Keyboard, AI Type Keyboard, Super Keyboard, Swift, Swipe if you like tracing, I also do believe there is one called Better Keyboard, and I think that's the one where I really don't like the size on it. It takes up too much. So, I do hope you enjoyed this video. and take I'll put some links in the video description to some of the different software. Thanks a lot.